everyone, it's John Bay, CEO of Standard Uranium. Today I'm here with Sean Hilliker, our VP of Exploration. We're going to talk to you a bit about our Davidson River project. So here we are in beautiful uh, northern Saskatchewan at Big Bear Camp. See the beautiful lake behind us here? We are situated here because this is the camp where we host all our team as we're out exploring. So today we're going to talk about exactly what it takes to make a uranium discovery, but more specifically give you details on the Davidson River project. So Sean, first of all, let's, get, let's go big picture here. Looking for uranium, why are we looking in this part of the world? Well, we're in the Athabasca Basin. So there's uranium deposits all over the world. Most of those are low grade. The Athabasca Basin is famous for the world's highest grade uranium deposits. So that's here what we're here looking for. We're looking for the really high grade, you know, 80%, like just ridiculous grades that is very efficient to mine and uh, yeah. So when we talk about the Athabasca <coughs> Basin being the greatest part of the world to make a uranium discovery, that's very true. And you look at the Athabasca Basin as a whole, you know, when people think about the eastern side of the basin where we have Cigar Lake and MacArthur River, they talk about the northern part of the basin where Uranium City was back in the, you know, 50s, 60s, up to the 80s. And yep. the southwest corner, that's where we are here right now. And actually, two of the greatest discoveries in the entire world were made here in the last 10 years. That was Arrow's, uh, sorry, Next Gen's Arrow Discovery and Fission's Triple R. Now, Sean, you worked with uh, Next Gen for five years on the Arrow. I did, so yeah. know all about that. So we know this region we're in right now has, you know, got high potential. Absolutely. So specifically talking about the Davidson River project, tell me a bit about, you know, what excites you about this project? Uh, well, like you said, it's not, you know, we're right beside those really high grade deposits uh, that have been discovered in the last few years, but we're not just an area play. That's what's really exciting about the Davidson River project. The geology is there and that's, that's what we can really use to our advantage to find the next big discovery. So, you know, we talk about our clear water domain mirror theory, about how these conductors that uranium is associated with uh, bend down and up through our project. So where Arrow and Triple R sit is on the Patterson Lake Corridor, and that continues up through our Davidson River property. Now, you mentioned the word conductor. Yeah. Maybe explain to our viewers who might not be familiar with that term, what is a conductor and why is that important in this region? For sure. So in this region, we know that these deposits are going to be associated with what we call conductors. Conductors represent packages of basement rocks that are conductive. So they contain, you know, large quantities of graphite, of sulfide minerals that are conductive. Um, so they show up on our electromagnetic surveys that we run. So we talk about VTEM, ZTEM ter oh, turbines. You say turbines. I said it again. Nice. Yeah. So we talk about VTEM and uh, ZTEM surveys. Mm -hmm. um, so we run those over the property to help us see through the overburden and all the material that lies above those basement rocks. And uh, yeah, we're searching for that uh, uranium in those basement rocks. So let me take our viewers back a couple years. We started this company in 2017 and we actually started our first geophysical surveys here in 2018. And that was a VTEM in the summer of 2018 and then a ZTEM survey in 2019. Now those two surveys identified actually 26 conductors on the Davidson River project, but four major ones. So those four major ones are much larger and those are the ones that we're going to be exploring specifically. So we have yep. our Saint, our Warrior, our Bronco and our Thunderbird. We did our first exploration program here with actual drilling last summer and we did 5,600 meters all on the Warrior trend, and that was done with 13 drill holes. And we followed that up this past winter with seven more holes, uh, six of those on the Warrior and one into the Saint. So as we're starting this summer program, Sean, we're gonna be starting at the Saint program. Why the Saint program, the Saint trend to start? Well, you know, we, like you said, we've only got one hole into it. There's still a lot of strike lake less left to uh, explore. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some really great high priority geophysical targets on there. Um, we use, you know, not just those electromagnetic surveys, but we look at magnetics uh, regionally and, uh, you know, resistivity and a whole bunch of different sort of layers of geophysics to, to target our drill holes. So really exciting target areas along that trend. So we're going to start there, follow up on our first hole, and then, uh, yeah, branch out from there and test our other conductors as well. Good. Now, so far we've done, you know, 19 of our 20 holes on the Warrior trend. Yep. We've just got our assay results back the other day. Yep. And we're using that data to sort of plan out our next drill holes. I've heard you talk about, you know, a geologist is kind of like being a detective, taking all this data from, yep. from drill, uh, drill results and using that to plan our next plan. Explain to me, you know, some of the things we're seeing in the assay results which help us plan our next drill holes. Certainly. So there's, you know, these, these types of deposits have been really well studied in the past. There's lots of academics out there that, you know, look into these things and, you know, do research to help us find these things quicker and more efficiently. So there's 
you know, a group of elements and different compounds that are associated with these deposits and uranium specifically. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we look for in our geochemical assays. So we drill our drill holes, we choose our samples, and then we send those to the lab. We use Saskatchewan Research Council in Saskatoon, um, and they analyze those and they give us a suite of those elements back. So we look mm -hmm. for any anomalies or, you know, exceptionally high values relative to the background values. Yep. And, you know, we can pick those out and those anomalies are what we, we're looking for. So, you know, things like boron is a good one, uh, vanadium, nickel, copper. There's a whole group of elements that are associated with these deposits that can kind of help us vector into where we want to drill next. Perfect. Now, one of the other, uh, or actually a few of the other terms that are common in some of our news releases are structure and yep. alteration and stack shear zones. Yep. Maybe walk our, our viewers through what those terms actually mean. For sure. Uh, structure is really paramount in this type of, you know, type of deposit. It's pretty similar to a, an orogenic gold deposit. So we're looking for shear zones where these rocks were, you know, torn apart and ripped up and broken open. Um, so that creates like the plumbing system in the rocks that these uranium bearing fluids can travel along. They interact with the conductive rocks and they drop out uranium. So the having those fluid highways in the rocks is really important. So structure is super important to these types of deposits. And now, not only do we get uranium from those fluids, but we also get alteration minerals. So things like clay and uh, a mineral called dravite, mm -hmm. which is actually associated with the boron that we were talking yep. about. Um, so, you know, we use all these different clues. We want to see these rocks, you know, open up and uh, be altered. And uh, yeah, that's how we, you know, vector into the next discovery. Perfect. Now we've talked about the Saint trend, the Warrior trend, but two we haven't put a single drill hole in yet are Thunderbird and Bronco. And yep. We plan to drill in this summer. So what are we hoping to do? What's the plan for those two trends? Well, they're really long trends. Like we have an exceptional amount of strike length. Mm -hmm. So distance along those corridors, they're, they're absolutely massive, which is great. Um, so there's lots of tests there. First of all, you know, when we test that corridor, we want to take aggressive step outs along strike and then do fence drilling so we can test up dip and down dip of those structures. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna test the strike length. If we uh, hit something that looks good, then we obviously will follow up on that closer and then just kind of refine our search as we get more information. Thanks, Sean. For sure. So thanks everyone for taking the time to watch our video as we specifically try to try to simplify some of the terminology we use in some of our news releases. Today we're talking about the Davidson River project. Check back later. We'll talk about our Sun Dog project and our projects on the eastern side. So once again, everyone, Sean Hilliker, VP of Exploration, John Bay CEO, signing off from Standard Uranium. Cheers.